from Make Munich 2019. I'm Tom, and this is Tom as well. Yeah, and this Tom, this Tom has uh, brought some 3D scanning equipment, some 3D printed stuff to the fair. So what what are we looking at here? This is like a pretty well contraption. Thanks a lot. So this is my photogrammetry rig. First try, like one year ago, I made this one. You have a camera over there and the object stays in the middle and the camera is orbiting the object, taking heaps of pictures, which will be reconstructed. All right, so this is, this is a photogrammetry scanner. It's basically the same principle as if you were to take your phone and manually move it around, right? Yeah, just making, moving around the object. So, so you're getting a more consistent and an automated approach to that, right? Especially automated when you need 200 pictures, you don't want to do it by hand. Yeah. So what's the, what's the software you're using with this? I know there's, there used to be Autodesk 123D Catch, there used to be Recap, all those. What are you using? I'm stuck to the freeware, which is mainly Visual SFM, which is quite unknown still. It's an old software. And quite recently, they released Meshroom, another great freeware. So that's, that's all free open source software that can you use with that? Yes. And your projects are as well, right? This is, this is not a commercial project. Yet. This, is, this is a hobby project that people can print. Yes, people can print it. All the files are available on my website. I called this project OpenScan because it's open. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that, that's the first version. If you move over here, we have the second one. And what's the, I mean, this is a lot smaller, obviously. I guess a, a lot more practical. It is more practical, but actually the scan volume, volume is the same. It looks smaller, but you can vary with the distance of the camera. Yeah, it's more practical. Print time is reduced to like 30 hours only. Which is still a lot, but it's, it's, it's a practical print, right? It's Anybody could print this. I have printed this on my China Anet A8 that you like so much. <laughs> Well, I've not even assembled mine yet. It's still in the box. I'm afraid of it. I know, I know. But for me, it has been working since two years already. But yeah, I've printed this one. They are designed to be printable on every machine which are with a 20 by 20 centimeter bed. Yeah, so the standard machine size, basically. All right, and I'm seeing you've got some, you know, 3D printing, I guess, inspired hardware back here. So you've got what looks like on the other side, there's an LCD screen here. And then Arduino and separate drivers. And that's, that's basically it, right? Yeah, basically, same as a... a 3D printer with one motor less or two motors less. And then on the other side, you can't see it now, you have a connection to connect normal cameras, Bluetooth, uh, iPhone, Android cameras, anything. So you're not really controlling the camera as in, you know, zooming, autofocusing, you're just shuttering it, you're, shuttering. you're releasing it, yeah. Um, and you are offering this, this PCB, this custom PCB, it's an Arduino Nano, right? Yeah. The plans are online, but you could also buy the parts pre-assembled or not pre-assembled, whatever you like, on my website. And as we mentioned, this is this is all open source. This is all you know. You, you could take this entire thing, build it yourself. Um, how much does it cost to build a, a contraption like this? If you buy it from me, it's like 150 euro plus printing the parts. Yes, and the camera. But most people have the camera. And yeah, and you, you've got a, what is this, a Fujifilm, yeah, so eBay camera on here, 11 megapixels, that's, that's fine, obviously. You were also using a phone on the other one. What's the, what's the difference there? Which one works better? It depends on the camera quality. Actually, my iPhone 5 is better than this camera. And all these scans are made with this camera, so with an iPhone 5 you can get amazing details. I got down to like 30 micron accuracy. But the thing with, with photogrammetry is you don't get scans that are to scale necessarily. You, you always have to scale them to size. Um, how, how are you doing that? I have two different methods. One is just measuring the part, taking this reference measure, yeah. or adding small dots or pre-printed, 2D printed uh, piece of paper of known dimension. So I know in the th 3D scan, this is one centimeter. And then in the software, you can just measure that out, look how large it is, and scale it appropriately. Yeah. And you've, you've also got something on here that I've not really seen before. I mean, I know the ring light, uh, that's a pretty common thing, but you've got some film on here. What does that do? Also low budget. Uh, this is a linear polarizer, and there's a second one inside the, I don't know, inside the camera uh, to avoid reflections. Because with photogrammetry, you have two enemies, reflections, glossy surfaces, and uh, unicolor surfaces. And this one at least solves the reflection issue. 
So what are you using the, the, the scanner for? What's your, your application for these? I'm always looking for new applications. For me, it's just a fun project that I'd like to spread. So I have scanned old car parts, uh, furniture parts, uh, modeling, or small figures, anything that fits in there. For me, it's just for fun. It's a fun project. Perfect. And where can people find out more about the project, the files? Where, where can they buy the, the PCBs? And this, is, this is the adapter board. This PCB gets assembled here in Germany. Uh, you can, or they can get it uh, on my website, openscan.eu. And the files are available on Thingiverse as well. All right, great talking to you. Enjoy Thanks the show. A lot.